This is the final video in a four-part series showing how we could deploy a spine and leaf OSPF-based fabric like this using NetEdit. Up until now, we've already configured the fabric at the spine and the leaf, as well as the VSX layer. But let's complete the configuration by configuring the host's uh, facing interfaces. So this is going to be this, the VLANs and the active gateways and everything for the hosts. So let's go ahead and choose all the leafs that we need to configure for this configuration and edit their running configuration. And of course, we'll create this final plan for them. So this is the configuration we have up until now. So now we're going to be having different VLANs and different racks here. So this is another cool thing about NetEdit is I can just deselect a couple switches. So I deselected rack two switches, and now I'm simply adding the VLANs that will exist within rack one and only rack one. So those are going to be VLANs 11 to 13. We're adding a few just to, just to provide the flavor of that. And then, of course, let's create those VLAN interfaces. So let's start by creating VLAN interface 11. We'll give this switch an IP address. Of course, we'll have to modify that for the two switches in this, uh, in this uh, VSX pair. And then we'll configure the active gateway. 11.1.1.1 and provide a MAC address for that. And then let's get this added into OSPF so that the, this, this segment can get routed across that OSPF fabric. So this is going to be uh, a simple modification here to the IP address. We'll just change leaf 2 to dot 3. And then the active gateway is already correct because that'll be applied to both of them. This is a common configuration, so we can simply copy that, add the next VLAN interface. and then paste in that configuration, make the simple modification. It's going to be VLAN 12, and then of course dot three for host B. There we go. Let's get this final VLAN in, it, in there, VLAN 13. Just paste it again and make the simple modifications. And now we've got VLANs 11 to 13 configured in Rack 1. So rack 1's VLANs are configured. Let's go ahead and select just the switches in rack 2 and do the exact same thing to them. Add three VLANs. These will be three unique segments on this side of the network. And this will be VLANs 21 to 23. configuration is actually exactly the same as from the other leaf, so I should have just copied and pasted. Uh, I don't know why I forgot that, but that would have worked here too. Get it back into OSPF and then <clears throat> modify the IP addresses and we'll copy and paste this and make the next VLAN.
Oops. Made a slight error there. Let me get that corrected here. And let's modify the IP address. This will for VLAN 22. Host B will get dot three. And finish it up with VLAN 23. Now that we've got the VLANs added to both these switches, let's go ahead and add the next common configuration that will be on these, these leaf switches, which are facing hosts, and that's going to be the MLAG configurations that will be connected to all the hosts in the racks. So we'll create a lag interface, a multi-chassis lag interface for VXX environments. Make sure it's not shut down. Give it a quick description. There won't be any routing on this. We'll add the VLANs here. So add the VLAN trunk native one. Uh, in this environment, we're using uh, LACP mode. And here's where we can deselect the racks that don't need these specific VLANs. And I'll add uh, the trunk VLANs, which will be allowed in rack 1, which will be VLANs 11 to 13. And then I'll just make sure rack 2 is selected, and I'll add the proper VLANs for rack 2. Okay, select both switches again, so now we can see the entire configuration. We can see that uh, VLAN 11 and 12 there are highlighted in blue, so those are only on two of the switches. And of course we'll finally add the actual interface that this lag is going to use, so that's going to be interface 1151. No shutdown, and we'll enable lag 10 on that. Validate this configuration to make sure this is a correct, accurate configuration. And uh, let's go ahead and get that deployed. And of course, this is the, the final configuration, getting the entire fabric up and running with rack to rack communication. So we're going to click the change validation screen here. And I expect to see that these pings are going to be working from rack to rack. So right now we're going to give it a quick refresh. Get some up-to-date tables here. Yeah, we can see everything on the left is turned green now. So this is rack 2. And I can see that rack 2 is actually pinging the host in rack 1. So I know right now that I've already got rack to rack communication. Everything's up and running. Um, I can ping everything in my rack, which is 21, 22, and 23. Another great uh, uh, thing to look at in an environment like this is the show LACP interfaces. So I can see the LACP interfaces for lag are up and all the ports are in the proper state forwarding traffic. So that's rack uh, two. Let's look at rack one. I can see that rack one is pinging the hosts in its rack, but of course it's also pinging the hosts in rack two. And the same thing with rack one. I want to make sure that these LACP interfaces are up and both of the interfaces are up and active and forwarding. So that's the completion. So I'd go ahead and commit and I'd be done getting my spine and leaf OSPF fabric set up.